Lane, which obviously made for a heavy pitch. But at least the Everton fans gave a warm reception to one of their former heroes, Andy King, who was making his debut for West Brom. Your commentator is Martin Tyler. There's a different look to Everton's midfield today because of a hamstring injury to Alan Ainsco. Steve McMahon is recalled, which means that Trevor Ross is switched to a wider role. And Eamon O'Keefe, who scored as a substitute in midweek against Notts County, now plays from the start in place of Peter Easto, who hasn't shaken off a Friday morning training injury. Albion's problems are in the centre of their defence, with both John Wiles' natural partners, Alistair Robertson and Martin Bennett, unfit. So Brian Robson takes on that role after missing two games with a bruised foot. Gary Owen is also fit again, and there's also a place for 20-year-old Nicky Cross. There's been so much rain, in fact, that the referee asked for the pitch lines to be remarked shortly before the kickoff. West Bromwich Albion in this first half, defending the goal to our left, looking to end the run of four games without a goal. Mills again the target, dropped for Steve McMahon. Mackenzie for Andy King. Here's Cross. Starting a new game for only the second time. Playing the one-two with King. And Nicky Cross going on. A good handling from Jim Arnold. The greasy conditions helping goalkeepers as Cross swept it in. Touch from McMahon as he was being held by John Wilde. Here's Lyons driving forward. Well, it drew an ooze from the crowd. I don't think Tony Godden was too worried. Always passing over the Albion bar. The header from right. Albion feeling they've been playing well enough in the middle of the field and making chances. Concerned, of course, that their run has gone for some six hours of football without a goal. Collision that was spectacular between Batson and Ratcliffe. But Batson has come off slightly the worse. Here's Steve McMahon. Now Ross. Thomas calling for it and getting it. Leaving David Mills. Bailey's gone to the near post and it's Bailey with the spectacular effort. Alan Bailey at the moment looking to recapture the impact that he made in the opening two games of the season for Everton when he scored in both those games. And Mickey Thomas picking him out well here. The volley just hooked wide. quick to close down Hartford when he's in possession and King doing the same here's Cross and it's Mills meeting it and the flag was up as David Mills got ahead of his marker scored a penalty on the opening day of the season but really hasn't recaptured the scoring form he showed at Middlesbrough Thomas, but the smaller man strikes back, Hartford, here's O'Keefe, now Ratcliffe, and Bailey, a deep cross from Kevin Ratcliffe, a clean jump from Bailey. So the two Everton attempts in the first 25 minutes of any consequence have both come from Alan Bailey. Mills doing well to ease it on here for Cross. And it deflects off Walsh. And so close. 
to deflecting inside that near post. Cross was content really just to drive it across as a shot come ball into the path of Regis who was arriving. But the deflection off Walsh. Nicky Cross with the corner. And it goes behind again off Mike Lyons. Coming off the near post, and Ross was there for Everton. And McMahon, not the cleanest of headers. Forward from Nicky Cross, John Wyle had stayed forward, and Mills couldn't collect the header. as ever. Oh, Keith rifling it into the net, but the whistle had gone, and that may explain Tony Gordon's rather half-hearted efforts to stop the shot, but the crowd certainly enjoyed it. And you can just see the referee blowing the whistle as O'Keefe let fly. It's a free kick that Hartford takes, and Statham clears. Out from Wilde. This is Billy Wright, and it will break here for O'Keefe, but not into his stride. And tidied up calmly by Nicky Cross. Two uncertain moments in this opening half hour for Everton. This time Gary Owen has gone across to take the corner with his left foot. Or Batson. Here's Regis trying to collect, and he did the difficult part and couldn't produce the shot. It's a superb piece of control, and then as it dropped to be struck at goal, Regis got it all wrong. And Thomas offside. Flick from Regis, and almost made something for Mills. King going on, Andy King for David Mills, and again Albion halted by an offside call. But Andy King, just for a moment, working himself into a position where perhaps a debut goal against his old club was on the cards, opted instead to reverse it inside for Mills. Huff wants a word after an off-the-ball incident between McMahon and King. Andy King, who was such a popular player here with the fans. Hartford unable to collect, but Lyons putting on enough pressure to bring Everton to the corner. Held in by Thomas. Godden's punch was solid. Thomas again. O'Keefe, good goalkeeping. Here's Bailey. 
Everton looking to keep up the impetus with Walsh. O'Keefe and time for Statham. But it was Eamon O'Keefe a moment or two earlier whose little flick header there produced good reflexes from Tony Godden. Swept wide by David Mills to the path here of Owen. Three waiting in the middle for Albion. And here's Statham. Struck Steve McMahon, who was able to readjust. Thing looking to pick a way through. And Walsh has to put it out. before the corner can be used to any profit the half-time whistle goes a goalless first half in which there has been much to admire in Albion's work in midfield where Andy King has settled in well but the rather disjointed first 45 minutes from Everton half-time at Goodison Park Everton nil, West Bromwich Albion nil and in the second half we expect Everton to hope to create more from the middle of the field the West Bromwich Albion side who still haven't solved the current dilemma out of putting the ball in the opposition's net. Lions. That's easily winning it back for Albion. Regis lets it run, and Mills onside, in against Arnold, and the goalkeeper comes out on top. And it's driven back by Owen, but another opportunity passes West Bromwich Albion by. Everton will feel that Mills was offside in the first place, but the flag stayed down. The fact that Albion have gone so long without a goal seemed to play a part in David Mills' mind. He wanted to make sure. Given away by Ratcliffe. Reed is taking too long and allowing Walsh to affect the recovery. drop for him again and Arnold's getting his body behind it although the handling wasn't totally clean David Mills wasting no time as the ball dropped for him snatching the shot flag up again the referee allowing play to go on the flag was for offside Owen, it's up again, the referee ignores the offside flag. Here's Mills. And some confusion between the officials then. I think the first time the judgment was that the Albion player wasn't interfering with play. When it went up a second time, the referee didn't see it. Robson and reacted angrily to the tackle and here's Batson Regis his shot the chance for Owen, it's in the net and it's offside so West Bromwich Albion must wonder what they've got to do to get a goal chalked up Mills played it in, Batson kept running watch Regis arrive here it comes off Arnold Owen plants it in well, offside decision says and Jim Arnold didn't escape the legacy of that collision with Cyril Regis although he can smile about it and Howard Kendall has come down from his seat in the stand one wonders whether he was thinking of changing the Everton cut anyway with the introduction of McBride as Everton now look to make their substitution
Steve McMahon being called off to be replaced by Joe McBride. Ross. Getting it back from O'Keefe. Riley through the middle. And here's McBride. Naturally left-sided. Getting a free kick. For obstruction. This touch that Hulmers came too quickly for Joe McBride. The tuning to the pace of the game. Possession long enough to find himself foul. Hartford over the ball. some time in this game to have something to cheer about but Mike Lyons provides it the flip free kick Lyons ducking his head getting in first and it ends up in the back of the net <laughs> 21 minutes played in the second half here's Owen kick in an almost identical position. And it's John Wilde diving in. Wilde, who was the player running with Lyons, as Albion conceded the goal. And looks to redress the situation. Hartford. McBride. Beautifully away from Batson. Regular, of course, for much of last season, Joe McBride, with a place to really play for now. Trusted to Ross. Right. So close. The back flick from Billy Wright. Walsh. Finally went out of Thomas. Everton. With this back flick from Billy Wright thwarted by fine work from Gordon and the crossbar. Thomas with a touch. Statham playing it straight to Ross as he gifted it. Well, it won't count. Viley was in an offside position. How relieved Derek Statham will be because he was here with nowhere to go. But you look at the position there of Alan Viley. Lions. Owen finding the bounce too much for him. His disallowed goal now looking even more significant. Viley making it back for Statham. Checking as Wilde makes his way forward again. This is Mills. Ross. And it's O'Keefe against Batson. And McBride in acres of space on the far side. Batson still doing the covering. And McBride so close to a spectacular goal on the break. And McBride has it again from a poor clearance by Godden. And Wiley turns it wide and appeals for a corner. Everton breaking initially here with O'Keefe, showing good vision. McBride. 
saw Batson coming across to try the shot. seen it as well. from their second home victory of the week. Wild beaten by Ratcliffe. Riley's job really is to make Batson play it back. Fouls him in the process. So it's still not over. Regis. Fans appreciate. It's certainly the highest of the day. John Wyle up for the long throw again. Uses cross instead. too long and the Everton supporters salute a victory provided by one of the club's most loyal servants Mike Lyons header in the end the difference between the two sides Everton still really short of the consistency that Howard Kendall will demand and as for West Bromwich Albion they must trudge off to the dressing room having now gone seven and a half hours of football without a goal Yes, and but some poor finishing, Albion might well have taken the points. <clears throat> it was an Everton performance that largely disappointed their manager, Howard Kendall, but he admitted afterwards that it was partly his own fault. I think I selected the wrong side. I think I probably should have started with Joey McBride. With losing Alan Ains' score with an injury, um, I selected a midfield, which was probably logical on the day, and then, having thought about it and having seen what happened in the first half especially, we lacked someone wide who could go past. What was your verdict apart from that? Uh, disappointed in the first half, but the second half, um, the goal relaxed everyone. A uh, tremendous goal, and that relaxed everyone. We started to play, and, and, and then it turned out quite exciting near the end. We could have had a, a couple more, I thought. Are you pleased with the style of football they're serving up? I think it can be improved, yeah, um, and that's what we're looking to do. Um, I'm aware that everyone wants to, to see style here as well as results, and uh, we'll try and provide that. Um, as I say, I thought that uh, when Joey came on, he gave us that width and he looked as if he was going past. Alan Ainsco has given us that up to now. So really, um, it was down to me the first 45, I think, that you know, I should have